Nicole. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so we're going to look at some of the triggers to violent behaviors as well as give you some tips for controlling your anger. For our feature story, reporter Tiffany McKay will talk to psychotherapist Dr. Leon Dickerson about violence and what really happens to our bodies when we're getting stressed or angry. You can listen to this broadcast or watch it at www.whcr.org. Okay, so video games. Lots of people play them and some spend hours, but can they lead to violent behavior? Brianna has the story. According to the American Psychological Association, violent video games like Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto are played by more than 90% of American youth between the ages of 8 and 17. Carrie, a city college student, says that her 17-year-old brother, who plays wrestling video games, reenacts the body slams he sees on them. The level of violence in video games has increased since 2005 and many more are quick to point out that avid violent video gamers have carried out most school shootings in recent years. Several mass killers, including Anders Breivik, perpetrator of the 2011 Norway attacks, Jared Lee Lawner, responsible for the 2011 shooting near Tucson, Arizona, and Adam Lanza, the Sandy Hook shooter, were all active video active players of violent video games, including Call of Duty. As technology becomes increasingly sophisticated, gaming systems now have the ability to make graphics more realistic. The more lifelike graphics are, the more interest consumers seem to have. Grand Theft Auto used actual actors' faces to create 3D moldings for each character in the game. In 2002, researchers Anderson and Bushman created the GAM, or general aggression model, to help explain the complex relationships between gamers and video games. Short-term effects were easily identified. The most prominent was that violent video games alter the way gamers interpret and respond to aggressive acts. Even those who aren't predisposed to aggression respond with increased hostility after playing a violent video game. The game becomes what's called a situational variable, which changes the perception and reaction to aggressive behavior. Long-term effects of violent video games have been fiercely debated, and to date, no studies have been conducted. Though long-term effects haven't been clinically documented, parents would be wise to monitor the amount of time their kids spend gaming and watch closely for any negative effects. This is Brianna Bynes for WHCR 90.3 FM, New York. Back to you, Ayana. Thanks, Brianna. Violent video games aren't the only place you can see violence. Just turn on your TV. Latasia has more. According to MediaAwareness.com, violence on TV has not just increased in quantity, it has also become more graphic, sexual, and sadistic. Plenty of violence is displayed on TV shows that many families tune into Monday through Sunday. Whether it's reality TV shows like Love and Hip Hop, talk shows like Jerry Springer, or dramas like Dexter, it's hard to escape violence. According to the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, children are becoming more immune to violence. They are gradually accepting violence as a way to solve problems and are imitating the violence they see on TV. A professor here at City College said that she was concerned about her grandson's behavior. She said that after watching what she thought was an innocent cartoon like Spongebob, he was running about the house holding a toy the way you hold a gun, saying that he was going to kill his baby brother. Her grandson is only three years old. His baby brother is two. There's violence in cartoons, on dramas, on talk shows, and even on reality shows like Love and Hip Hop. According to an NBC.com documentary on violence on reality television, producers are creating drama and instigating fights while reality show stars are agreeing to the violence for ratings. But is violence the only way to get ratings, or are there other ways to get viewers' attention? This is Latesa Jeffries for WHCR 90.3 FM, New York. Back to you, Ayana. Thank you, Latasia. Between violent video games and violence on TV and in movies, a lot of people are becoming desensitized. 
We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, Tiffany will talk to psychotherapist Dr. Leon Dickerson, who will give us some insight into violence and rage. CNN.com recently named New York City as the most stressful city in the United States because of the high cost of living, long commutes, and overcrowded conditions. Some New Yorkers combat stress with exercise and fun activities in Central Park. But if stress has become too overwhelming for you to cope with, there is help. Harlem Hospital has an outpatient clinic that can help you deal with stress, alcoholism, anger management, and substance abuse. Seminars and workshops are held at Harlem Hospital on West 137th Street between Lenox and 5th Avenues on the 4th floor. Workshops are held Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to noon. Call 212-939-3210 for more information. Domestic violence and abuse can happen at anyone, yet the problem is frequently ignored, excused, or denied. According to an article by the Huffington Post, 24 women per minute experience violence with their partner. According to the hotline.org, between 55 and 95 percent of women in 10 different countries, including the United States, who had been physically abused, had never contacted non-governmental organizations, shelters, or the police for help. Domestic violence has become a worldwide epidemic. If you are a victim of domestic violence or if you know someone who is being abused, you don't have to be afraid to tell. You can contact WARM. WARM stands for We All Really Matter and is located right here in Harlem. You can contact them at 347-346-6210 or visit their website at www.weallreallymatter.org. WARM will help you heal from and leave an abusive relationship. They will also help you transition from a shelter and rebuild your life. Again, that number is 347-346-6210. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We All Really Matter presents Bridging the Gap, the fifth annual domestic violence panel discussion held on Thursday, October 30th from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. WHCR 90.3 FM will broadcast live from WARM's fifth annual domestic violence discussion. Panelists will include Tandra L. Dawson Esquire, Janine Larnay, Hannah Pennington, Sergeant Giolis Alvarez, Carrie Booker Searcy, and WHCR's Dr. Leon Dickinson, host of Mental Health for Better Living. Dr. Cynthia Grace will be the moderator. There will be a reception following the panel discussion with food sponsored by Red Rooster, Amy Roofs, Jacob's Restaurant, Mana's Soul Food, Joe's Crab Shack, Spoon Bread 2, and Make My Cake. That's WARM's 5th Annual Domestic Violence Discussion, held on Thursday, October 30th at 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at the Harlem Hospital Center Auditorium, located at 506 Lenox Avenue at 135th Street. For more information about this free event, please call 212-939-1237. That's 212-939-1237.
four women in the United States will experience domestic violence during her lifetime. On the phone with us this evening is Dr. Leon Dickerson. He is a licensed psychotherapist and substance abuse counselor. He graduated from Adelphi University and received a doctorate in clinical social work from NYU. He has a practice here in Harlem where he helps people deal with various issues, including depression, anxiety disorders, and stress. He's also the host of the Mental Health for Better Living on, on WHCR 90.3 FM every Monday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Dr. Dickerson will help us get further insight into aggressive behavior that often leads to domestic violence. Dr. Dickerson, welcome to Harlem Beat. Thank you for having me. So we were wondering, what happens in our bodies when we get so angry that we resort to violence? Well, we resort to violence for many different reasons. Um, but usually if we're having a problem with controlling ourselves, especially in the area of anger, um, then there are certain reactions that do happen in the body. Uh, so uh, it, the response varies from person to person. Some symptoms include teeth grinding, fist, you know, fist crunching, uh, flushing of the skin, sweating, muscle tensions, things of that nature. So what role does stress play in abuse or violence, violent behavior? Well, st st usually stress is the outcome in many cases of the abuse. Um, for instance, you know, children living in a home where domestic violence is a way of life are often, you know, sort of st stressed because of the fear, of the constant fear that they live in. Um, the anxiety that's also attached to this fear is not knowing at any given time when it's going to happen. Okay, so... Do men or women who usually abuse their spouses, seeing that we're talking about children in the home, then abuse the children? Well, uh, yeah, uh, the, the definition of domestic violence um, sort of answers that. Um, and the, the definition is, is any abusive, or violent, or coercive, you know, forceful or threatening act um, that are inflicted on members of the family system or household. In other words, uh, domestic violence could be, of course, between, you know, two people, usually it could be the man, uh, the woman, the wife, the spouse. Uh, but children, if there are children there, the children are also prone to uh, violence. And about people who are in abusive relationships, do they tend to attract abusive people? Like, say, if I were to be in a relationship with someone, break up with them, and then afterwards find myself in another, in another relationship where the person is abusive, is it that I'm attracting that kind of person? Yes, in a way I could say yes, because people who uh, find themselves in abusive relationships are usually uh, people who grew up as children living in dysfunctional um family systems that violence was, is, you know, was or is an option, you know, so they are familiar with those uh, violent behaviors. Like, for instance, um, let's say a young, you know, I mean, it, of course we're talking, you know, men and women, but let's say a young girl grows up in a home where she has witnessed time and time again her father physically um, beat the mother in front of her. Um, although this child may grow up saying, you know, <laughs> Next, you know, I, I will not get in a you know relationship like that. But usually, they end up in relationships just like that it's because they're familiar with that, um, you know, with that behavior. As opposed to a young, let's say, a young girl grows up in a home where there's no no violence, no hitting. There's talking. There's love. You know, there's working things through. Uh, when the young um, young lady uh, that come out of that type of setting. When she encounters a violent person, uh, she knows to get away. She doesn't know that, you know. She's not. She's not. She's not, she's not familiar with getting hit, or, or or hitting being an option for any for anything. Okay, so to say to get onto another track about violence, do you believe that some people get so angry that they see black, or well, rather black out or see red? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, that you should ask that. Um, Blackout, uh, you know, uh, or seeing red, so to speak, 
and uh, and the term blackout are actually two separate type of terms we use. Um, seeing red, when someone says that they saw red, um, it, 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 that's usually an explanation of the actual moment that one loses control. In other words, you know, a person could be, let's say, in a heated argument, and then all of a sudden, fists are flying. Um, usually we mean, you know, when we say we saw red, we, we want to think that we were un not, not really conscious, but actually you are conscious. It's just that that's the point of no return. That's the point that you you actually strike out. Um, now, the, the term blackout is usually associated with um, alcoholic amnesia, uh, where alcoholics who become violent when drunk um, and are behaving in a blackout means that they will do things, but they're just not going to remember what they did or said when they wake up the next day. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Dr. Dickerson will be on the D domestic violence panel discussion on Thursday, October 30th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the Harlem Hospital Center's Auditorium. Dr. Dickerson, can you please give us some information on how to reach you before the panel discussion? Yes, um, I can be um, reached at my office in Harlem. Uh, the telephone number is 212-289-6012. Thank you for talking to us on Harlem Beat. Back to you, Ayana. Thank you, Tiffany and Dr. Dickerson, for that insightful discussion. We've told you all about anger, stress, violence, and rage. So I want to end the show on a more positive note. So Sajin is going to tell us how to combat all of that negative energy. Sajin? According to the Exploration of Consciousness Research Institute, anger is a normal emotion that stems from what is thought to be a threat to your identity, self-image, property, loved ones, or yourself. When we are angry or stressed, our bodies release cortisol, or the stress hormone. Cortisol causes our muscles to tighten, our blood pressure to soar, and our hearts to beat faster. Although anger is an emotion that everyone experiences, it becomes unhealthy when we express it in a way that harms ourself or others. To avoid this, we have to manage stress effectively. In her book, How to Effectively Control Your Anger, Vicki Shutt says that stress and anger are deeply connected. When we are stressed, our levels of frustration and tension rise. On the other hand, when anger is not expressed, pent-up frustrations can also stress us out. One of the best ways to reduce stress and anger is with exercise. When we exercise, the body makes endorphins, which are a sort of happy hormone or chemical that tells our bodies to relax. Activities that get these hormones, go these hormones going are jogging, lifting weights, riding a bike, jumping rope, and even walking. Walking for 30 minutes has the same effect as running for an hour. According to the book, Biology, Life on Earth with Physiology by Gerald Odzirk, those who regularly participate in group sports like pickup basketball games or flag football experience less anger and stress. Another way to combat stress is through meditation. Meditation lures out serotonin, the feel-good hormone. Serotonin helps us feel happy. Shutting your eyes and opening your mind for as few as 15 minutes each morning will lower your stress level and response to anger. This is Sajin Morenci for WHCR 90.3 FM New York. Back to you, Ayana. Thank you, Sajin. I'm sure a lot of those things will definitely help a lot of our listeners. So thank you all for listening to Harlem Beat. We hope you really learned something valuable about stress, violence, and its triggers and how to combat them. Tonight's reporters are Brianna Bynes, Latasia Jeffries, Tiffany McKay, and Sejean Morenci. Our PSA reporters are Elsie Alonzo and Anna Karen and Drickinson. Board operator is Michael Dendari Arena, assisted by WHCR's production manager, Tina Dixon. Music director is Stacy McGallan. The radio journalism class is taught by Professor Angela Hardin. I'm your host, Ayana Cole. Thank you and good night.
listening to WHCR 90.3 FM, The Voice of Harlem. CNN.com recently named New York City as the most stressful city in the United States because of the high cost of living, long commutes, and overcrowded conditions. Some New Yorkers combat stress with exercise and fun activities in Central Park. But if stress has become too overwhelming for you to cope with, there is help. Harlem Hospital has an outpatient clinic that can help you deal with stress, alcoholism, anger management, and substance abuse. Seminars and workshops are held at Harlem Hospital on West 137th Street between Lenox and 5th Avenues on the 4th floor. Workshops are held Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to noon. Call 212-939-3210 for more information. Domestic violence and abuse can happen at anyone, yet the problem is frequently ignored, excused, or denied. According to an article by the Huffington Post, 24 women per minute experience violence with their partner. According to the hotline.org, between 55 and 95 percent of women in 10 different countries, including the United States, who had been physically abused, had never contacted non-governmental organizations, shelters, or the police for help. Domestic violence has become a worldwide epidemic. If you are a victim of domestic violence or if you know someone who is being abused, you don't have to be afraid to tell. You can contact WARM. WARM stands for We All Really Matter and is located right here in Harlem. You can contact them at 347-346-6210 or visit their website at www.weallreallymatter.org. WARM will help you heal from and leave an abusive relationship. They will also help you transition from a shelter and rebuild your life. Again, that number is 347-346-6210. Today... You hit the snooze bar. You checked your email. You checked your fantasy football team. You rejected an insulting trade offer. You ate your lunch. You did all the things that one normally does the day before a 175 mile per hour hurricane blows through your city, leaving it in a state of ruin. You never know when the day before is the day before. Prepare for tomorrow at ready.gov slash today. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We All Really Matter presents Bridging the Gap, the fifth annual domestic violence panel discussion held on Thursday, October 30th from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. WHCR 90.3 FM will broadcast live from WARM's fifth annual domestic violence discussion. Panelists will include Tandra L. Dawson Esquire, Janine Marnay, Hannah Pennington, Sergeant Giolis Alvarez, Carrie Booker Searcy, and WHCR's Dr. Leon Dickinson, host of Mental Health for Better Living. Dr. Cynthia Grace will be the moderator. There will be a reception following the panel discussion with food sponsored by Red Rooster, Amy Roofs, Jacob's Restaurant, Manna's Soul Food, Joe's Crab Shack, Spoon Bread 2, and Make My Cake. That's Warm's fifth annual domestic violence discussion held on Thursday, October 30th at 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. 